Hey guys! Hey! And I'm Crystal from the Dog Psychology and Training Center. This is my husband. Eric. And we are bringing you our weekly live Q&A. Whoop whoop! Whoop whoop! Um, so, uh, the, question, the, the big question we had this week that we wanted to focus on was, um, somebody commented on our, our post, or our, our Facebook live from last week, um, about the Rottweiler who lunges and barks at people outside of the window. Um, let's see. So, my Roddy jumps at the window when neighbors walk their dog. I'm afraid she will go through. Any suggestions? Um, yes, lots of suggestions. Um, and it's, it's a legit concern because yeah. Rowdies are big and powerful, and it wouldn't take much for her to actually go through that window. So, um, obviously, the repercussions for that would be she badly injures herself or she gets to make contact with another person and dog and gets into a fight and again injures herself or injures right. someone else because she's such a big powerful breed um so i had a a case similar oh goodness the beginning of my dog training career so about 10 years ago um was a rottweiler as well who hated the um uh uh, what UPS? I couldn't UPS think of guy. the UPS guy, which was an inside joke for me because at the time my husband worked for FedEx. So I was like, "What's the problem?" I don't like UPS either. Um, but my question was, "What's he doing?" The UPS guy shows up, or the the, the FedEx, FedEx guy, guy shows up. <laughs> they only mentioned the UPS. Like that was it. Just this, just the UPS guy. Um, he had a vendetta against him, I guess. But um, a similar thing where you know he would bark and lunge. They had a bay window, um, and so he could actually get like up on that bay window and and be clawing and there were scratch marks on the, the glass and it was it was frightful um especially for the ups guy right, um right. he didn't even have to go to their house he could just hear the dog in the cul-de-sac um as he was delivering delivering packages to other families so um again you know i i think we asked you what you've been trying and you said sit and stay um making her sit stay but my other dog barks and makes her crazy then it begins again so i would practice that sit stay with your other dog barking for other reasons. So if you could have a family member or a friend um, possibly be outside the window or um, to get the other dog barking or even playing with the other dog to get him riled up to be barking, um, having her focus through a lesser distraction than somebody as outside mm -hmm. as, yeah. um, can definitely diminish the wow factor for her with the other dog barking. Yeah. And it's often, um, you have like your, your um, I don't want to say alpha dog, but you have your leader dog who's the instigator, yep. um, but he's not really like that action problem dog. <laughs> um, he's kind of like me in, in school, in elementary school and even high school. I was the class troublemaker, but I never got in trouble because I didn't do anything wrong. I was just the instigator. Like I just had these brilliant mad scientist ideas. <laughs> And then I would find people to do them for me. Um, and then they'd get in trouble. And they'd be like, well, Crystal told me to. And I'm like, what? I'm like, did it? She's um, ducking out So that's already. me. That was me. I can totally relate to the black. I think you said it was a black lab. Um, I can totally relate because that was me. And then we have minions that act out our crimes. Um, and it kind of looks like you have that situation where your your lab is the, the instigator that, that causes the chaos and your Roddy's like, let me at him, I'll finish it, I'll take care of it, you know? And, and she gets all pumped up um, that way because the instigator said go. Um, so work on that. The other thing you can work on is getting the black lab to stop barking too. If he really is the instigator, if he could just quit barking altogether um, and the, the Roddy wouldn't, need to react at the window then i guess that would be problem solved it's not always that easy though so we get it um so definitely practice on on the lab sparking separately but to make sure the roddy doesn't hurt herself or someone else or another animal um, practice building up those distractions so maybe even before you start working on the lab to stop barking use that barking to your advantage to have controlled training sessions yeah. to get her to focus on you so what what does that look like what does that mean um, from this point on she has the leash on in the house when you are home not when you're not home not when she's in her crate not when she goes out in the backyard to go potty because um, we don't want it to get caught on something but when you are home with her and you are monitoring her, that leash stays on her to drag around. So randomly, when you have a neighbor walking their dog past the house, you can pick up that leash 
regain control, pull her away from the window, get her to focus on you, whatever technique you're doing, the sit stay, um, you know, whatever it is, maybe having her uh, practice loose leash walking or healing or even a place command, anything to get her mind off of that, that walker. Um, isn't that what they call the zombies in Walking Dead? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, neighbors are zombies too. Uh, but yeah, get her to focus on something else. So that the so this is what's going through her brain when somebody's walking by the window. She's all pumped up. She thinks she's all macho, and she's like, "Yeah, that's right. You keep walking. You keep walking. I told you to keep walking." And guess what? They just keep on going because that's what they were gonna do anyways. And so in her mind, she thinks, "Yeah, that's right. I told you. I told you." And you listen. She gets you know she gets all sassy with herself. So next time. She's more pumped up. She's more aggressive about it because it worked. So she's going to really show them this time. Um, and so by distracting her away from that person walking and they still walk by, she's going to start to realize, huh, I don't have to make a fool of myself. And they just keep on walking by anyways. Huh, who would have thought? She really thinks she's controlling this situation yeah. with her actions. Um, if we can change her actions to let her see that the situation is still going to happen, mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. So I don't know what your neighborhood is like, but school's getting out here in a couple weeks, and we're going to have a lot more kids outside. Um, so you you might have a lot more opportunities to work on this um, with her lunging yeah. at the window. And if... If you're not home during the day and she still lunges out the window, I would put her in a crate when these kids are home from school um, because you can't control what she's going to do when you're not home. Yeah. Um, and again, we don't want her to injure herself or anything else. Even if she's not a fighter, she's just so big and powerful um, that you know, getting up on somebody, jumping or whatever, even if it's playful licking, yeah. she could injure somebody. So um, you know, making sure she's, she is safe and the neighborhood is safe is super like, that's the priority. That's number one. Um, and then we address the behavioral issues. So when you're home, that leash is on, you're ready, you're prepared. Well, you may not be prepared. You could be cooking. You could be going to the bathroom. Um, in those cases, if you're going to the bathroom, I would take her with you. That's why she has her leash on. So she's not able to get away with barking because you are predisposed at the moment. Um, so having her available and then if you have young kids um in the neighborhood that you know or maybe you know their parents um or even you know their neighbors it doesn't have to be kids um kids are just easy workers <laughs> um having somebody purposefully walk past your window when you are prepared so like calling them up and be like hey Susie uh would you mind walking through my window in ten, by in you know just about 10 minutes and then calling up Bob hey Bob would you mind walking by my window in 20 minutes you know my Roddy is just you know she's being naughty at the window and I just want to help um fix this so if you could really help me out this this would help me tremendously um you know and setting up people to walk by your window when you're ready um so that again the more victories you have the less she's going to try. Mm -hmm. So the more wins you have, it's like a scale. Whatever weighs the most is how she thinks. Oop, there we go. Um, you know, if right now she's barking and it, it's, it's weighing pretty heavy. She's getting away with all these bad behaviors and it's getting down pretty low and she thinks this works. But the more you get her to stop barking and those people keep walking by, she's going to realize, oh, I can just be quiet. And they still walk by. Who would have thought? Um, so taking control of that situation and, and almost changing her mindset that she doesn't have to be a jerk. She, she can just relax. <laughs> she doesn't have to tell you who's walking by the window. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to tell people to keep walking by the window. Um, she just has to coexist with them. Um, so, yeah. Any other scenarios that I forgot maybe? No, I think you did pretty well. I think well. I covered it. That was, that was quick. Um, so that's, like I said, it's similar to a case I had um, a long time ago. Um, and, of course, if she is more aggressive than we are letting on, um, or you just feel like you can't handle the situation, that's what professional dog trainers are here for. We deal with this kind of stuff all the time, and we can definitely help you get through it faster and safer. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to a professional to make sure everyone's safe in this process, or at least teaching you how to get her focus on you during these high intense uh, moments where she is having some naughty, naughty thoughts. Um, all right. I was thinking we should change it up a little bit. What do you think about maybe having like a guest on our weekly live? Yeah, I think that is a great idea. I kind of mentioned it to Jessica. I see her on here watching us. Um, about having um, somebody come on and talk about like essential oils because that's something I personally 
I like, but I don't really know anything about it. I don't so, know much about um, oil either. Yeah, let us know what you guys think of this. Would this be something that interests you? Um, and what topics you would be interested in? So, um, you know, essential oils would be one. Yeah. Um, maybe um, healthier foods like raw diets or... Um, Doggy chiropractic. Yeah, some homeopathic um, yeah. remedies other than traditional medicine. Give us Definitely. some ideas. Yeah, throw them out there. I mean, we... We're open. So um, summer's going to be fun. So let us know what concerns you have for summer and what topics you'd like to learn more about um, because we want to we want to please you. Yeah, and we want to know things for. too because we don't know about this oil <laughs> we stuff. We want to know things too, guys. And uh, this, this is just an excuse for us to get other smart people on here to learn things that we don't know. Yeah, so. and make us look smarter yeah. by osmosis because yeah. we're close to them. So um, let us know what you guys think. We would love to hear from you. Um, we'll also be posting like a, a poll. Yeah, I think you can do that. Yeah. I've never done it. Uh, we'll learn. Yeah, we'll post a poll and have you guys um, check the boxes that you think are interesting and add some um, some lists of things that you think of that we don't because y'all yeah, That's are a fantastic so, idea. Um, awesome. Well, that's all we got today. So we'll keep it short. Um, there's a... A podcast uh, that I follow by Shalene Johnson. She always says, be brief, be bright, and be done. So we're done, y'all. Um, we'll keep it short, and uh, we'll join we'll join you, or you can join us, next week at the next Q&A. <whistles> He's into whistling today. It just makes me think of that commercial. That makes me not want to whistle anymore. <laughs> Alrighty then. All right, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. See ya.